All right, folks, uh, instead of just making a big old long Facebook post with 20 or 30 pictures, I figured I'd just do a short video um, showing you what I did and how I did it. Uh, basically, it's a Group 24 in the Group 24 box, of course. Um, 90 or so amp hours on the battery. It's pretty close. Um, Got a little Everstart 750 watt inverter here, uh, wired of course separate from the rest of the system. Um, I like these because they've got a little display on top so you can uh, see how much pull you're getting from it as it's going along. It's kind of handy. Um, of course, two 110s, two USBs. This thing's got a lot of USB ports on it. Um, okay, I've got it so that it's not running all the time I, I switched it so we put a switch on a master switch here that fires up all of the 12 volt units 12 volt stuff I got on here we got a functioning 12 volt AC port um, of course on only when the master switch is on and then the other side we've got a USB port here, dual USBs, again, and then that basically covers the 12 volt section of this and the 110 section, of course, with the inverter. And then uh, I just got done adding the solar to it, so and I didn't want it on all the time, so I switched, made that switchable also. I got a switch here. Flip it on, it turns on the charge controller, so it's not on all the time, wasting battery with the display on. It's just a little cheapy, I think I paid $7 for these solar controllers, or 20 amp. Uh, no frills, just basic, it doesn't even show your amperage input from your solar panel. I was kind of bummed about that, but you know, you get what you pay for. Uh, the two USB ports, of course. So this thing can charge your phone, whatever USB connections you've got. 110, 12 volt, solar, pretty much basically covered everywhere, any, you know, all around. Uh, as far as the wiring goes, I, it's not quite done yet. I mean, it is, but it's not. I want to take... I've got too many grounds going to the battery. I need to put a bus bar in there so that uh, all the ground, so I just have one ground going into the batteries, not only just for aesthetics, but just make it easier to do repairs on if needed. Uh, basically, the wiring's pretty simple. You just run 12 volt to the bottom tang of the switch and you run a ground to the top tang of the switch. And then to wire up, you just run a positive wire to each of your 12 volt components, daisy chain them together, and then and along with my uh, switch here, or my display here. And then it goes to the center, the positive of those goes to the center tang. And then the negatives just go to ground. That's why I'm saying I need a bus bar because I've got, a, like I said, three or four ground wires and it's uh, in, in that on that little post on the deep cycle battery. It's kind of messy looking underneath there. I just want to clean it up. Uh, same with the solar controller. I, oh, uh, 20 amp fuse on the 12 volt side of the 12 volt outlet. Just due to the fact that I want to plug in a trickle charger or something in there, it wouldn't it would be able to handle it. Well, I think my trickle charger is only like three amp anyways, but I just put 20 amp in there just to be safe. Uh, just put a, a 10 amp, 10 amp on the, on the USB side, uh, ran it right, right off the positive there instead of running on this. Originally I had an external fuse box on top and it looked horrible and it, just kind of sucked all the way around. So I just put inline fuse connectors in there. Um, the uh, solar panel itself, I wanted th these, 
all of the other little or tiny ones that I was looking at that were half the size of this wouldn't take 10 gauge cable. So I got these just so that because the 10 gauge cable is mainly what come off of these solar panels. So I wanted to match the cable. I made these cables. Um, I bought the MC4 connectors, of course on eBay. This is about everything other than the battery the battery box and the car battery cables were purchased on eBay. Um, I highly advise if you're going to make your own connectors to buy the MC4 crimp tool so that you can crimp the little ends on inside. I did with my uh, she shed over here uh, without them and it was really a pain. Uh, it's, I think I got lucky I got a little kit with the connector it had five sets of connectors, crimpers, a set of the little twist tools, and a case for like twenty dollars shipped from the U.S. So I uh, thought that was kind of cool. I ran ten foot cables here over to my solar panel. It's just a little forty five dollars I think I paid for it. fifty watt panel, about three amps. Uh, so it does its job it would for what this thing would pull off of it it would keep it charged daily unless you started to go hog wild on the 110 plugging in a microwave or something like that now i'm saying yeah yeah there's no microwave that run off at 750 watt inverter but there is i did see one that i'm thinking about buying it's the old sharp carousel half pint microwave half a cubic foot uh 400 watts and I think this would run it. If not, I will put it in the she shed because I'm running 1500 watts over there on 200 watt Windy Nation panels and the 30 amp Windy Nation controller on that. That thing's a screamer, 190 amp hours, uh, works well. Um, basically, that's about it. Other than on my second unit, this is my first unit and I'm highly thinking about getting rid of the two foot long automotive battery terminal cables that I put on this and going to the one footers like I did on the uh, on the second unit just for aesthetics I mean just make it easier look better that kind of thing but that gives you an idea of what it was what it took and what you need basically about 20 maybe a little bit more 20 hours of work on this one just due to the putting it together, tearing it apart, putting it together, tearing it apart, improving, mangling, fixing the mangles, getting it to where it's not only useful but dependable and safe. Pretty safe, I think. Pretty safe. But there you go. Long and the short of it. Uh, any questions, just drop a line under the video and I'll try to help you out the best I can actual price on this thing like i said i got screaming deals on the uh on the battery in the inverters i think i paid like 15 bucks a piece for the inverters then i got the batteries refurb through my work for 30 bucks so with that kind of price i believe i'm in these things about I'd say a little, probably between 110 and 120 bucks if you count all the cables and the wiring and the connectors and you know, all that stuff. I mean, the 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 12 volt USB plug was like nine or eight dollars, and I got a ton of the 12 volts for like a dollar fifty a piece. Like I said, the charge controller I think was like seven bucks, and. You know, mainly just wiring and stuff. That's what took the most of it. But there you go. Any questions, just let me know. Thanks for looking.